This is lecture outline seven, Roman numeral number four, relationships involving delta H reaction. Well, in the previous lecture, part of this lecture, we went over how to determine delta H reaction using coffee cup calorimetry. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about the relationships between delta H for different reactions. And uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that if the reactants and products of a reaction are switched, the sign of delta H reaction changes. And we've seen an example of that, and we'll put the same example here, so it's uh, close from us. So uh, for the combustion of propane, we take uh, propane plus five moles of oxygen goes to make three moles of carbon dioxide. plus four moles of H2O. What we've said previously is that delta H reaction for this is negative 2,044 kilojoules per mole and according to A if we flip the reactants and products we uh, get propane and five moles of oxygen as products now. So we've flipped or reversed the reaction. And delta H reaction for this is positive 2,044 kilojoules per mole. And let's think about what that means. What that means is that as we go on the top reaction from propane and oxygen to carbon dioxide and H2O, that that process releases energy. And uh, that energy goes from the reaction to the surroundings. If we then do the opposite process, so then in order for the reaction to occur, the process must take in energy. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, if we think of the potential energy of the positions, as complicated as this is, because there are so many atoms, protons, electrons, etc., involved, but whatever the potential energy here is, as these bonds change into the product bonds and molecules, then the potential energy is actually lower for the products which means that the reaction releases energy. So delta H reaction is the heat energy per mole released. It is also the change in potential energy as we go from reactants to products. So because the products have, or sorry, because the reactants have more potential energy, the products have less. As you go from reactants to products, you release energy. That energy goes to the surroundings. And so that same amount of energy must be taken in for the reverse process or for the when the reactants and products are switched. Okay, so by that same way, if the coefficients in a chemical reaction are multiplied by a constant, then delta H reaction is multiplied by a constant too. So if the coefficients are multiplied times two, Delta H is multiplied times two as well. So now we'll go to uh, two moles of propane plus 10 moles of oxygen And delta H from this top one is minus 4,088 kilojoules per mole. And in the same way, if we have twice as much reactants, 
twice as large an amount, going to twice as large an amount of products, then we should expect to get twice as much energy released. In addition, so each reaction with its own set of coefficients, its own reactants and products, has its own delta H value. So please be aware of that as well. Okay, so those are the two relationships we need. We're gonna use these relationships in what's called Hess's law. For Hess's law, uh, the third thing we need to know about delta H is that if two chemical reactions are added, then the delta H reaction can be added as well. Um, in this first example, what we're gonna do is we're going to use Hess's law to calculate delta H for a reaction for which we don't know the value based on two reactions for which we do know their delta H reaction values. And this is a powerful technique for finding delta H for reactions that are harder to do based on reactions that are easier to do. And so this is our second way to find delta H reaction. Okay, so Hess's law is a process it is a bit of a puzzle. I enjoy puzzles, I don't know about you. So, uh, but let me uh, take you through the process of solving this puzzle. It goes something like this. I want to create this reaction out of the above two reactions. I can see that two CuCl solid is also a product uh, in one of my reactions, same as it is in the reaction I'm trying to make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this reaction up here and write it down here just exactly like it is. With its delta H reaction minus 36 kilojoules per mole. Then I can see that I have copper, uh, let's see, CuCl2, that is my reactant in the reaction that I'm trying to make and determine its delta H, and it's a product up here. That means that I'm gonna have to flip the reactants and products and change the sign of delta H. Let me see, so uh, the coefficients are the same. I'm keying off these, this, because it's only in one of these reactions up here. Okay, so I'm gonna put a minus sign there and a minus sign. The minus sign here just means flip reactants and products. Because the effect of flipping the reactants and products is to change the sign of delta H. All right, so write out the reaction flipped. I try and line up my arrows when I can, when it's uh, that helps me keep things a little more organized. Now, uh, the things like chlorine that appear in both reactions, so uh, I'm going to cross both of them out because they effectively cancel. One way to think of the reason they cancel is that whatever potential energy or energy in general is associated with chlorine as a reactant, that same potential energy is associated with it as a product. So we're not really canceling chemical species, we're canceling their energies at least that's one way to think about it here. I can see I have two copper solids on one side and one copper solid on the other. So I'm gonna cancel one out from each side, again, like canceling their energies. I'm gonna add up what's left and lo and behold, I get the reaction that I'm trying to build. which is a harder reaction to do. So add my reactions, add my energies, and I get the delta H reaction 
for the re uh, reaction that I'm looking for. Let's see. So this bottom reaction is an endothermic reaction. It takes energy in in order for this reaction to occur. Here's another puzzle. Here's another Hess's Law problem. It says calculate delta H reaction for the reaction here based on three reactions now. So this is a more complicated example. It's a more complicated puzzle. Same idea though. I'm going to work this one. It looks like this. When I look at the reactions that I'm given, I see I'm going to key in on this 2 HNO3 aqueous, 2 nitric acids. Up here, I have four nitric acids, and it's the only place that nitric acid appears. So I have to make the coefficient of four into a coefficient of two in order for to use these reactions to build my unknown. What that means is I'm going to have to multiply this reaction times half, and I'm going to have to multiply the delta H times half as well. Let me start by writing that. Half times two is gonna be one and two. Half times five is gonna be 2.5. Delta H reaction for this. 256 minus times 0.5 minus 128. One down, two to go. All right. Now, looking up here, let me see about NO2. NO2, nitrogen dioxide, only in one place here as well. On the top, it's a product. On the bottom, or the one I'm trying to create, it's a reactant. That means I'm going to have to flip the reactants and products. Then I have a 2 here and a 3 down here. That means I must multiply it times 1.5. And do the same thing for the energy as well. All right, let's see if I can keep track of things. So this is going to be 3NO2. Then I'm going to make 3NO plus 1.5O2. Delta H reaction for this process, minus 116 times 1.5 minus, I get 174 kilojoules per mole. Starting to see some of my oxygens canceling, which is good because oxygen does not end up in my overall reaction. Third one here. So there's nitrogens in a couple of them, oxygens in all of them. Only one nitrogen uh, monoxide, though, in the third and first reactions. So let's see. So I need... 1NO here, I have two NOs. I'm going to, it's still on the product side, so I'm gonna do that by half. Keep my fingers crossed that this works. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go get another piece of paper and start over again. Let's see, now half N2. Oh, I hope this works. All right, so half O2 goes to NO. Uh, half 183, 91.5. All right, let's add them up. See what we got here. I'm gonna move over to green. I got 
an N2, and an N2. And I got no N2s on the other side. Oh. NO, N2O, NO. Well, let's see. Uh, to, let's see, 2.5, 1.5. Oh, this one's backwards. Let's try that again. Minus, minus. Now I'm going to have this last one. It's going to be N O and half N two plus half O two. No, I just need it just plain two. Yeah, that's it. So switch the sign. They're like little puzzles. Annoying little puzzles. All right, let's see if this works out. Now I have two on this side and three on that side. Good. I have three good, I have 2.502s, 1.5 plus one. I have an N2 and an N2. Now all I'm left with is three NO2s plus H2O. All right, goes to two nitric acid plus is there an NO in here somewhere? One NO. A hard reaction to do, a somewhat hard reaction to solve for, and now my delta H for this final is going to be 128 minus plus 174 minus 183 minus 137 kilojoules per mole and that looks right.